Shoe is not his name. Shoes a seat. Shoes, a seat that was there before the person who you're looking at a shoe. But he took what they were doing further. He surpassed his forefathers. So he was given that position and he keeps that position until someone surpasses him. But you can't surpass them by being outside of them. You don't surpass them by saying I want to surpass them. We surpass them by going up under them and learning from them and getting all that they can give you. And in time when they leave this realm, you become the wisest one left behind, then you become the shoe. You learn from them and you remain a humble student of your spiritual master. I'm my master's student still, and will always be, because without him, I wouldn't even exist, as is. As long as I maintain that way of thinking, I'm straight and I stay in growth. I said, I don't know, but I know who does know. And I know what books he wrote them in and I know where to find those books in my house, in my room on that bookshelf. You understand what I'm saying? There it is, Pop said on page such and such. As long as you stay in tune with that, you're okay. But the moment you start saying I want to take over and I want to be, it's never going to happen. You have to stay in tune. So you don't become Shu by saying I want to be Shu. Shu went up under the order of those who were dealing with wind and thermodynamics, and he became so wise in it. He created things others couldn't even think about. Those of the order saw this and said, the ancestors are reborn, he's back, and then he becomes the new Shu. He raises up his students and the wisest amongst his students in time take on that seat. It was done from father to son, because if I'm a teacher, my sons will be teachers. That's not saying that's the only thing they'll know how to do, but they're going to have to know how to teach. And so when I'm no longer here, all of my experiences, like my father taught me, all of my and his experiences are now inside of me. So when I'm no longer here, all of the things that I'm teaching my sons will now be inside of them, and I'll be a voice in their head as part of their DNA telling them, don't do that, do it this way. It's done from blood descendancy, from father to son, master to student. If all these students which are the inhabitants of the planet Earth aren't ready, we the Netaru say this class is over, you will fail your judgment. Your planet will be destroyed, which is happening right now. They said the planet shifted. The news showed the satellite photos of how the land is gone. If they drew the maps right now, you're talking about hundreds of miles of land that disappeared. We're in the end times. Don't expect another Mahdi, don't expect a savior. If we don't transform ourselves into God, give it up, because if we don't, then the Messiah can't come. How can the Messiah be born? If we haven't set the conditions by which he's supposed to be born into? So if you're looking for the Messiah and you haven't listened to the master teacher, who's preparing the way for the Messiah, and doing what he's telling you to do and setting up the sacred city where we're going to protect this child that has to be born, then ain't no Messiah going to come. That's the point he's making. We don't do what he's telling us to do to get the conditions right. You're looking for someone to come who can't come because the conditions aren't right. In order for something to come, in order for something to grow, the conditions for growth have to be right. You can't grow a messiah in the middle of the ghetto, you can't protect his mother. You have to create the right environment and that takes work. That takes more than what we're doing here right now. We're talking doctrine that's important because that's for the mind, but when this video ends, we have to start developing a productive lifestyle. That's what most people don't want to do until it knocks on your door, until the earthquake or the tsunami or the hurricane hits your house. That's when people get serious, but usually it's when it's too late for each person. There was a man named Elijah, and Elijah had a servant. The Bible says before Elijah left, he blew a double portion of his spirit onto his servant, what does that mean? It means that when you're a student, the master was a student of his father who taught him everything he learned from his father, and everything he learned from his father was taught for many generations back. All of that descendancy was passed into the mind of this individual. Then he took all that knowledge that he had learned and all that he had ascertained from our ancestors and was able to utilize it to further his people. Being one with the Netaru means being responsible when appointed to that seat. They not only are appointed to that seat, but they have to uphold and upkeep those principles and that element, and protect its secrets. Each element or each principle, or each attribute or each deity name or title has certain powers that comes with it. You learn about that in ancient Egyptian order, the book, the master teacher wrote called Renat, the names, the sacred word, and each of those names when said in certain tones are able to cause certain things to happen. For example, hydrogen is first atom on the periodic table, we say Adam Ray or El Rahman. El Rahman translated into English is the yielding, that which yields, and they use this word because hydrogen is that which yields water. That's why it's called hydrogen, because you're saying the word hydro, hydro like a fire hydrant, dealing with water, gene, genealogy or that which produces water. How does hydrogen produce water? When it's combined with oxygen. So we have hydrogen which produces or yields water and Rahman, which is to yield. So if it's called hydrogen, that which produces water, it tells you that it's not water, 
It can't be water and then we say it produces water. In ancient times they say Ray came out of the primordial waters, noon, and that noon symbolizes the whale, and there's a man in your Bible called Jonah. When you say the word Jonah, it's Eunice, a man in the belly of the whale. What does that mean? The whale is a mammal, and all of us were men in the belly of a whale, because you all came out of your mother's womb. So Autumn Ray came out of the primordial waters as the deity responsible for seeding the womb of a creature called the dolphin, that seeded old earth right into the primordial waters. Man was created on the sixth day, carbon is the sixth element, and carbon is what all life comes out of. It's the black substance that all suns have on their surface. So the deities didn't just take a name and say, I'm number one, I'm two, I'm three. It had to do with how things come into existence. When you get to the next deity, that becomes helium, helium from the word helios which means sun. This was our ancient Tama Ray or African or Egyptian way of telling you about creation. And we did it in this way to hide it from the mortals because we knew once they learned about atomic fusion, they would create a bomb, whereas we were using it to power our great societies. They couldn't think of but one thing, world domination, so we told it in stories. Ray came out of the, bud of a lotus, the water lily. By night it closes up and it goes underwater, and as the sun rises the water lily comes up, opens up and faces the sun. So it became a symbol of being in the light and in the darkness, knowing when to speak, when to shut up and to keep that secret. Then they will have Asaru, Osiris and he's wearing the hat of the Bolto fish, the symbol of the fishman, you call him Dagon. And that fish is used because the Bolto fish, the male carries the young in its mouth and then spits the young as if they are born out of its mouth. What does that have to do with man? Well, if you understand semen, men of the sea, that you're carrying life inside of you and you spit forth life, then you understand what that has to do with why Osiris is wearing that hat, because we always acknowledge the power of fertility, the power to procreate, something that the European lacks. He has a hard time conceiving, not that he can't conceive, but his birth rates are dropping to alarming levels. He is in danger of being outpaced by the Muslim population living in his countries, who have made their intentions clear to any and all who know history, and neither are friends to the Nagaru people. Now, in ancient times, that was your eternal life, your children and your works. You are living eternally, as long as your seed lives and as long as your works live. If you don't do great works and you have no children, guess what? You cease to exist. But we knew that as long as you acknowledged that, you would work to do great things. So they had to teach you eternal life as a spooky thing. Be good, die, go to heaven. We teach, be agreeable, raise your children to be deities, take control of the future, sky is not the limit, you are eternal. Those 99 deities are children, students after the order of Ray, and Ray is the overseer. There was no spook, your gods were alive. They were living, they were breathing, they were walking. And this is why the sacred master teacher gave you these Egyptian names. He said, I didn't give you the Egyptian name so that you can start worshipping a statue. I gave you the Egyptian name so you would take on the personality and the personification of the gods. Thereby, the gods will be reborn amongst you. But you stop short of that and want to put your names away and want to go out and worship, when you were that which was worshipped. You want to go out and praise, when you were that which was praised, and you weren't praised because of belief, you were praised because of your works, your works is what does it. If we get back to living by our works, then the gods come back, but if we're only living by our words, then that's just going to be just that. But once you remember, and this is something the master taught us, once you take that on that responsibility people going to talk about it. They going to say you did this, you do that. Embrace it and keep working, because if they're not talking about you, then you aren't really doing anything. If you're getting things done, people go and talk about you, that's advertisement. Grandma's words of wisdom, you've got 12 months in the year, 6 months to mind your own business, 6 months to stay out of everybody else's business, you'd be busy for the whole year, and that's what we suffer from, everybody worrying about what everybody else is doing instead about what they should be doing. All males and all females possess both the negative and positive polarity. Not negative is in bad, not positive is in good, positive and negative is in a battery, both which are necessary for survival. The universe you live in has more dark matter than luminous matter. It is dominated by mysterious or hidden from form of dark energy that is causing its expansion to accelerate, speed up rather than decelerate or slow down. Meaning scientists are saying there is something strange is happening right now, as the universe is expanding they would expect it to be slowing down, but it's speeding up and they can't figure out why, what's fueling it. They can't figure that out. And now they're starting to probe into what's called dark matter. Because of probing into dark matter, they'll discover the primordial sun. So that's why they keep saying they're trying to find through the Hubble telescope where the central point of this universe is, that central black hole. 
it is represented by the point of mystery called a moon ray, the hidden one, who brings in darkness headed towards the fourth point Anu Ray, the source of all light, the true black light from which all other lights were birthed. O oh Anu, you are the light, and the light is in the light of your light, O oh light. How can darkness or triple darkness be observed? When looking at a spectrum, there appears to be a dark line or band, which is a result of electromagnetic radiation being absorbed. This electromagnetic radiation has a particular wavelength. That's how your stars or your suns have what's called electrical storms on it. For electricity to exist there has to be negative and positive. The sun has to get that positive current from somewhere, where? There has to be something that's fueling it, just like your car has to have fuel. Your sun is plugged into a central sun that's fueling it. And that central sun of your galaxy is plugged into the central sun of your universe that's fueling it also. The same way the cells in your body function. These lines called absorption lines are seen within the spectrum of the sun, it creates what's called absorption lines, where you can see there's a separation between the surface of the sun itself and the energy that's permeating above it. This gives a black print or blueprint to the physics and chemistry of the central point within this galaxy. We say black print, not blueprint because blue the original man was blue black. Black is not a color. It's a combination of all light, colors and things, everything is coming out of triple darkness. When the electromagnetic radiation is absorbed a spectrum is produced, if this radiation is from a hot source and it passes through the cooler matter, it will produce dark absorption lines and bands like the bands on a tree. When they cut a tree down, they're able to look at the rings to see its age. When one of these particles dies or reverses, this the ancient Tamaraeans referred to as evolution, which is a decaying and death, as opposed to revolution, which is rebirth, life. They'll teach you evolution is to go forth and it's not, it's to decay. When certain electrons and anti-electrons called positrons come together, they annihilate or destroy each other. A particle can annihilate only with its own antiparticle. Remember, the universe functions off of math, which is order, which means it's balanced. So for every physical thing there is a spiritual etheric counterpart. There are three states of matter and antimatter, or matter and plasma. There is the physical realm which vibrates onto the spiritual realm, and then from there to the mental realm, all individuals are feeding from the mental realm called the mental reservoir, and channeling it to the physical realm, at which point you would term it my thoughts. These three realms are made up of different densities. Density equals mass of substance, unit or its volume. This density is energy, and depending on the sound waves it produces, it can break glass, thus, energy can have an effect on matter. Once you know about energy, light and matter, you can break and escape time and space. Time is an illusion. For the word time in dyslexia is a myth, which means to give off. So time is based off of how things are interpreted by you. Meaning, if I'm at a club having fun, time flies by, if I'm at a funeral crying, time moves slow because time or better yet your environment is affected by your actions, your metabolism, your metabolism means how fast things appear to move for you. When you're depressed, your blood is pumping at a slower rate, thereby time tends to seem like it's moving slower. When you're happy and having a good time, your blood is pumping at a faster rate, thereby time seems like it's moving faster. What happens when you're doing a job that you don't really want to do? So once you overstand time and matter, and how you is matter, flesh is affected by time, the illusion, you can speed up and slow down time for yourself. Not for someone else because they're not perceiving it from where you're sitting. Densities are stratas of space and time, and the Ethereans are on a higher density level than you. In essence, we can control time but didn't even know that we could. Time is an illusion. We can't control the illusion but you can manipulate the illusion for yourself, that's the point we're getting at. Every element in existence is inside of your body. Some of them your body uses, some of them your body stores, and others of them pass through your body and back out into the environment. Each element has a principle. Hydrogen is an element but it has a principle it produces. So it has a relationship with what's in your body, what it produces, but yet what stores the water in the body and the cells. What part of the cell is the water stored in the plasmatic you? That's what you were reading about in the gold book, when it's talking about the plasmatic you and the etheric you that plasmatic you has a tie-in with hydrogen. The organ that is responsible for dealing with the liquids in the body is the kidneys, it's responsible for filtering out impurities and keeping only those liquids in the body that are necessary to fuel the heart. So this was a system when these gods were creating this planet and this universe and the solar system in its body, everything had an order. They were scientists, they were alchemists, they were architects, they were physicists and they were setting a system by which things were to take place, and they took control of their destiny by knowing this system. But when you go to school, the way they teach it to you, they make it so boring that you don't want to study it. If we did, then we'd start looking at the world and saying we can change this. 
If your child was sick and you knew about herbal teachings or herbalists or herbology or homeopathic medicines, and you apply that along with science, you would get a chemical encyclopedia and look at the names that's on the back of medicines like Tylenol and know what herbs to give the child, and the disease would be going within 24 hours. That's what Tamari was teaching us. That's what the Master Autumn Ray came to bring for us. That's what Africa has to give to us. But we gave that up and put our trust in Tylenol and Bear and Advil. All of us have to teach self-reliance and show our youth that we practice what we preach. In the future they will pick it up and take it further than we could ever imagine, and they'll become the deities reborn. That's what the Chinese do, that's what the East Indians do, that's what the Russians do, everybody does that. But the black man, we just spend time hating on each other. That's all we do, talking about each other. Black people take responsibility of your kids, raise your kids to be great. Your blood gives you the link to the gods. That's why all the blood banks are always in your neighborhood, your blood is your link. Each creature on this planet has the ability to communicate with other beings interdimensional, but only through your blood. All mental messages are sent through the blood. That's why they spend day and night trying to breed in with you. Teaching about interracial relationships, they push it, they push it because they want to figure a way to breed you out. They don't mind you the non-conscious mind, but in your conscious mind, they've got to get rid of you. But in doing that they're destroying the planet, because as the master teacher taught and the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that you are the magnetic attraction that keeps this planet in good form. What would happen if they were to remove the black man off the planet? The planet would be drawn into a star holocaust. You are in tune, you are that third sun. There's the sun out there, there's you and there's the sun in the earth, its core. All three must walk this planet as one. As long as one of us is alive, we all live, but they don't want you in your conscious mind. So they're trying to breed you off and bring in the new black man, which is the neutrinoid, which is a Caucasian with enough melanin to survive, but his heritage is that of the beast, and that's what we're up against. That's why they had to grab the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, because these are the things that he was teaching us, and these are the things he was bringing out to the world, and they couldn't take that chance. So they have to try to stop it, to stop it out, to create dissension. We are made up of everything in the universe, which is in our blood. Nine ether is a combination of all existing gases, elements, chemicals in and through nature, and if all of those gases and elements and chemicals are in you, are you not in all and all are not in you? You are the composition of each of those elements, you're not every single hydrogen atom in the universe, but you have hydrogen in you. So you are a part of all of those hydrogen atoms that are in the universe and all of them are in you as that one. That's why you say you are Netter Shil Netteru, a god amongst the gods, or a guardian amongst the guardians, the nature of nature. Nature has rules and laws that are binding, meaning a tree has its DNA and that says how that tree will grow, how tall it would be, its shape. That's the nature of a thing. You have a nature of nature within you, a DNA encode of a seed that's in you called a chromosome. They use the word chronos from the Greek god chronos, which is supposed to be the highest god, and all of that is inside of you, and how you utilize that depicts what you become. By them having blood drives, basically that's mixing your blood, you're not really supposed to do that because those reptilians are taking that blood and that's what's keeping them alive. They are subsisting off of your blood and your breath. The Europeans don't breathe like you and me, just watch them, they pant. Everyone talks about do it, monad, and triad, but the fourth point, the hidden point is called the tetrahedron. It deals with the science of creation. Something they can't tell you. When we speak about anti-construction and anti-destruction, we're saying there's the physical plane, then you have the plane of force, then you have the spiritual plane, then you have the fourth point, which is the mental plane. The spiritual plane would be the DNA, and then the mental is controlled what you call the chromosome. The DNA determines what you are genetically, tall or short, color of hair, color of eyes, teeth, bone structure, eyebrows, hair, etc. The plane of force, the RNA deals with the environment and it decodes your DNA based on your environment. For example, a million years ago, a tall person could get food out the tree. My DNA says, I'm going to jump, grab my food to eat, descended from that same tall person, millions of years later, I can jump well and throw a thing in a hoop, he now earns millions of dollars to buy food. His RNA says, you don't have to jump in the tree and grab fruit anymore, you live in a day and time where you can collect millions of dollars in sneaker deals and get food, that's what the RNA deals with. Now, the mental part of you, that's that fourth point and that's the chromosomes, that's what the Netaru are interacting with. That's the hidden point. We say a moon ray is the hidden, a moon ray is the setting point. The point where things are undifferentiated, you can't differ between. When you get to the point of hydrogen, hydrogen borders on quartz bias and zeals, as well as helium, it's that middle point. At what point does hydrogen become hydrogen? 
Because hydrogen is 99.9% .9 subatomic energy, everything we consider solid is 99.9% .9 empty space. There is nothing between you and your ancestors. If you are, they are, so think and you shall become it.